horrible shadow. It's your big head. No, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah, it is. That is your head. Mm. Welcome back to Box Office Maniacs, and tonight we have the big one. The one that we've been waiting 11 years to finally freaking see, and here it is, Avengers Endgame. So this is actually a pretty special film for the both of us because we were there day one. We were there when Iron Man first came out, and I believe we both took off work to go see it. And we were there for the first showing. It was us and like three other people. So it was like us and like three other people, and I don't think the other three other people had any idea of what was actually going on in the movie. And we had just got done reading, uh, what was the name of that comic? Ultimates. The Ultimates comic, which sort of took place in a different universe. So I've always loved Iron Man, and the first time I heard about them making an Iron Man movie, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Then I heard Robert Downey Jr. was going to be cast as Iron Man. I'm like, that's it. I mean, that's it. But when I heard Robert Downey Jr. was cast in the role, I was like, oh, well, they got it. I mean, that that is Iron Man. Just like he says, that is Iron Man. You couldn't cast anyone better for that role than him. And I'm like, all right, well, how are they going to do the suit? And then I seen an image of the suit, and I was like, oh, well, that's an okay-looking CG suit. And then I learned it was a real suit, and that blew my mind. And at that point, I'm like, this is it. I mean, th they've done it, and, and even when we came out of the theater, I was like, this changes everything. That's what I said. That's what I said. Did I not say that? I said, this changes everything. I mean, this is it. And 11 years later... What, what, what he said was, but Bucky, they don't know. That none of these other people know. Oh, yeah. but, but we know. And we did know. We know. 11 years they, later... They don't know. 11 years later, we still know. And so this was kind of, I would say, our Star Wars. Because we never really got to experience Star Wars from the very beginning. But for the Marvel Universe, we were there for day one. And we were there from 11 years later to 11 days later. Years later. Right. All right, so this is going to be a spoiler-free review, as much as we can not really talk about the film, but we are also going to do a full spoiler review right after this one, because I was asked to do one. So there you go. I'm going to do two reviews for this, one spoiler-free, one that's going to have everything that's in it, that if you hadn't seen the film, you were going to be spoiled. That's what spoiling is. But that's not this. No, this is spoiler-free. So we're not going to spoil any big surprises or anything in this film. So this was three hours long, <laughs> the longest so far anyway, of all the Marvel films. You gonna say anything? <laughs> I'm just waiting for get, get a word in edgewise. Just go, go off, Dick. Because this is it. This is the end of the Avengers. This is the end of their however long, almost over decade long films they've been making here. And this was it. I mean, what? All, how much more excitement could you possibly have to go see this film other than you know just a 10 plus excitement level to go see this. <laughs> ten, 10 plus, huh? 10 plus level of, of excitement. That's pretty high. It is. That's a high level. So you thought it was worth it? I thought so. Yeah, the thing, the thing here. <laughs> Done. End of review. <laughs> yup. Got it. Well, the thing here, too, is it starts off, I guess, you know, the thing is, like I said, it's three hours long. In my opinion, they could have probably cut out a good. 30, 10 minutes. No, 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes of the, of the first half of this film. But saying that, there's stuff in here I just didn't feel that was really just necessary. It sort of dragged it down a little bit in the beginning of it. Because the first hour, there was very little going on. A lot of dialogue, a lot of talking. But, on the same hand, just like the Game of Thrones episode that was on last week, it was sort of a tribute to all these fans who have watched these films for 11 years to finally, you know, see their all these characters that you fall in love with for the first hour just being the characters, just being themselves with no crazy CG explosion action. It was just pure story and pure acting from all these characters. And that I didn't mind because it was great. Still, for those people out there like, I want action, might be upset for the first hour because it was pretty slow moving until it really started getting going. I think that probably maybe there only was about maybe five minutes that could have been, got cut out of this movie. That was probably the five minutes where I had to run and go to the bathroom. I don't, I don't think I missed anything. But other than that, I, I yeah, it, it didn't feel like three hours to me. It breezed by. It was a breezy three hours. And, 
that was with me seeing it in 3D, which, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so yeah, when I went to yeah. buy tickets, we didn't know if Dave was going to be on day shift or night shift or what, so we couldn't get tickets for Thursday or Friday because we didn't know what hours he was going to be working. Plus, they sold out in, like you said, 33 seconds, so I couldn't get him anyway. Yeah, so I got tickets for the first show on Saturday at the time when the tickets went on sale because I bought them the day the tickets went on sale. The first show was at 9 o'clock in the morning on the theater that we wanted to go see it in, which is the theater that has the Dolby Atmos, and the first show was at 9 a.m., and it was in 3D. I was like... I didn't even know it was a 3D until I got to I didn't theater. realize either. Like, I, I mean, like, I knew at the time, I guess, but I bought the tickets like a month and a half ago, so I didn't remember. Until we got to the theater yesterday, and it was like, oh, it's in 3D. Great. Yeah. We usually don't <laughs> see movies in 3D because no. I wear glasses, and it's a pain in the butt. And on top of that, I also had a migraine. So I had a migraine and had to see it in 3D, and it was three hours long. I still loved it. I want to go see it again when I don't have a migraine and not in 3D. Yeah, I also want to go see it again. Um, now that I've experienced it and know what it is, you know, and I said like the first hour I thought kind of dragged, but I think if I see it again, now kind of going into it, kind of anticipating knowing what the film is, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying it's dragging. I'm saying for people who want a Marvel film who wants pure action and nothing else, sort of like the Infinity Gauntlet, this isn't the Infinity Gauntlet. This is... Uh, takes place after the Infinity Gauntlet, obviously, and the first couple hour, hour, 20 minutes or so, they are picking up the pieces. They're trying to adjust what exactly happened to the world and happened to their friends and happened to everything. And that's sort of what the first half of the film is until they start figuring out what they're supposed to be doing and going and doing it. Like I said, we usually don't go see movies in 3D. I personally, and because 3D doesn't work very well for me because I have glasses, but um, I would say, I know there are people out there that love to go see stuff in 3D. I don't know that necessarily you would have to see this in 3D. I mean, there wasn't that much, I thought, that really made it worth seeing in 3D to me. I mean, some of, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but like the Ant-Man stuff is about the only stuff that seemed like it was actual 3D-ish to me. But other than, other than that, you know, I don't really, I would say you don't need to see it in 3D. Now, I didn't think the 3D effects were anything. I really didn't. No. There were, there were parts in the film, actually, which was kind of funny, when somebody's, like, in the film standing in your way, and I'm, like, trying to look at <laughs> like, what, get noticed, out of the way. I noticed that, too. Yeah. Just Where like, there's, like, stuff, the camera's panning, and there's stuff right in front of your face yeah. that it has to pan past. It's like... And you're like, um... This is I, it's blocking my view. I'm trying to look at something here. And there was actually just... one point where I thought somebody got up and stood in front of the projector, <laughs> but I think it was in the movie. I think yeah. there was somebody standing, like close to the camera but because it was in 3d and i was like man yeah, the hell it's like this because yeah, there were there somebody was there talking and the way that the, the camera panned it, there was it, somebody in the foreground yeah, that it, it had like, to go past it, it was like, like it was right in front of you and you're like i, I can't see it <laughs> but yeah you know, 3d effect wasn't that great i mean i would not recommend going to see this movie in 3d because it's nothing great it's a it's a 3 8 3 3 d three hour headache is if you want to wear 3d glasses for three hours but yeah, um, but no, it's absolutely not worth any extra money to see it in 3D. It's fine without 3D, and yeah, there's no reason to spend that extra money. The only reason we did it is because we wanted to see it in Dolby Atmos, and I will say, seeing it in Dolby Atmos, that's worth it. Yeah, and we did not go to no stupid IMAX. See, here in St. Louis, they have the IMAX screen, and I think it's terrible. I, we have went and seen dozens of movies there. I would probably, unless I got free tickets, I would never go see another movie in um, IMAX. I just don't think it's worth it. It's like $30 a ticket or something like that just for extra sound. Plus, at least since we've been, I think the last thing we've seen there was the first Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming. I think that was the last thing we saw there. And the yeah, because we went to the free preview. And yeah. It was, on, it was oh, in yeah. 3D. Which we didn't know until we got there. Which we wouldn't see for free. Yeah. And uh, the seats were still straight up and down seats. They didn't even have recliner seats in there. And, you know, now that I'm used to recliner seats, my, my back was killing me before the movie was just not worth it. At We've least, gotten too spoiled. Yeah, it's just absolutely not worth it. Plus, the theater we saw it in is a thousand times better than the IMAX. It sounds better. It looks better. So I don't even know the purpose of having that IMAX theater there anymore. I just don't. Right. Yeah, I guess. I guess people... Still have to go see things in IMAX, but there in this theater, absolutely not worth that either. I mean, if you have functional eyes that don't require glasses and you can see 3D well and you enjoy that, then even if I go even for if it. you can see 3D, it wasn't worth going to see 3D. Yeah. All right, so without trying to spoil the story here, it's kind of hard to really talk about the story. 
But obviously this takes place after the Infinity Gauntlet, the Infinity War. And like I said, wh whoever has been was whoever was left after that um, is is picking up the pieces, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. I mean, what could they possibly do? And what's really kind of funny about this whole film is there's so many fan theories out there. How are they going to do this? And what are they going to do to to stop it? And you know, and ninety percent of those things didn't even come true in this movie, which is pretty funny. It's uh, like they're going to do their own thing, and they did their own thing here. So a lot of these predictions of what was happening never came true. And the great thing that I love, as you guys know, I'm sure if, from seeing me on any other reviews and Dave as well, is that I don't like to watch trailers. I don't like to, I don't, if it's a movie I'm already going to go see, then there's no need for me to watch a trailer. But sometimes it's unavoidable. So I saw the very first teaser for Endgame and that's all that I saw. I did not watch one other second of frame of footage because I didn't want to know anything. I wanted to go in as clean as I possibly could. So both of us, I think, had truly no idea what was going to happen in this movie. No, no clue whatsoever. No. Because that first teaser doesn't really give anything away. It's only showing you characters that you already knew were still around after Infinity War. So yeah. it doesn't, and, and it gives you no idea at all as to what's going to happen. Yeah, I had no idea. I, had, I mean, the thing it, with this film is just like going to see one of the Star Wars films, is you had to basically block the world out before this movie because everybody loves to spoil it for you. And anyone who ever mentioned just the word Endgame in Facebook, I snoozed them for 30 days. I used this for Facebook and just evaporated everybody who wanted to spoil it for me. Just let you know I can do that because I got the power. I don't want to know anything about this film until I go see it. And even when we went to go see it, there was a big old sign there that says, please do not spoil Endgame movie for other people who have not seen it so it was all over the place and it's just ridiculous to have to go through that just to enjoy a film and not find out what it's about in this day and age of the internet i try yeah i pretty much since about tuesday because i think tuesday was when they had the hollywood premiere like the red carpet and everything since then i pretty much did not look at twitter or facebook i didn't want to see anything i didn't want to know anything because i knew that people were starting to go to screenings and seeing it and I didn't want to see anything. And something that Dave and I have started to do, I think we started with uh, either Force Awakens or The Last Jedi, is when we get to the show, either put in earbuds or earplugs or something from the moment we walk in the theater until the movie comes on, because we very rarely get to go to the first show. So there's a high likelihood that there could be other people in the audience who've seen it already. And I don't want to overhear anybody talking about it if they've already seen it. So. Plus, then I don't have to listen to the stupid commercials and the trailers. It's just blissful silence. Yeah, I mean, I had <laughs> headphones on when I went to go see this, and I was listening to The Dirt, so soundtrack to The Dirt, and it blocked everybody out. Until the movie actually started, I took my headphones out, and that's when I started watching the film. So, yeah, that's, you know, it's really cool to do that, and then you don't have to hear all the people yelling and screaming and, and everything around you, um, and then you can just kind of take them out and then just enjoy the film once it starts. And I did go to the bathroom one time. I, I tried to... Uh, figure out a, a place in there to go and as soon as I went to the bathroom the other theater was getting out and I was like oh my god of course and then I'd run into the bathroom as fast <laughs> as I could try not to listen to anybody run back out and fly back in the theater before I could get spoiled from anybody yeah I would say that, that uh, this is the first time that I've ever seen signs on the outer doors of the theater that say you know for the, you know the courtesy of other patrons who are coming into the movies please don't talk about Endgame as you're walking out of the theater after the movie because there's other people coming in. I've never seen anything like that in my life. That's crazy. So as for the film, I think it was the final love letter from Marvel of these characters, of showing these characters for the last time. I'm sure some of them will pop up here and there. Some probably are just done and they don't want to do it anymore. And I gotta say, like the last probably 35, 40 minutes of this movie, it was just quiet. I mean, you, you could hear a pin drop. I mean, it was just quiet. The, the entire audience just didn't, just pure quiet as it was. It was pretty cool. Not a single person made a sound <laughs> towards the end of this film. And that was kind of cool to see, too. It was just like everybody was just respectful. Nobody, you know, there was no screaming kids, thank God. And it was just a really good audience, actually, when we went to go see it. And they did a good job with, um, well, first they eliminated a lot of these characters from the first movie. 
So there wasn't that many characters in here to actually, you know, interact with. But the ones they had in here, just like all the other Avengers films, they did a good job of mixing them in with the other characters. And not like it's not like one person had more screen time than another person in this. And I think, again, it's just a really good mixture of people. Like, if you like Thor, Thor's in there. If you like Captain America, you'll see a lot of him. Or Iron Man, or, or even Ant-Man. Ant-Man was a big role in this movie. I was surprised at, on how much he actually was in this film. The one thing, like Dave said, I know that people are acting as if this is like the big conclusion to the entire uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, but like it's going to continue. There's going to be more movies. This is just kind of like, I know they do like, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, whatever. Uh, this is like the conclusion of that first generation, basically. It's like going from Star, Star Trek, the original series, to the next generation. Basically. It's kind of like the old guard, like Pat handing the reins over to the next group of people. However, uh, somebody, Robert, who watches the channel, that was, was one of his, one, his, his one complaint was they didn't really do that. They didn't, do, you know, they didn't, they could have ended it while, while giving it to the next group of people, but there really ain't that many, there's no one really to give it to because the next group of people really haven't come in yet. So if, I mean, if they had started off with some new characters and, and things while this was going on, I can understand that, but that other group that's going to be coming isn't here yet. So there's nobody really to, you know. Well, without getting spoilery, there are other people. I, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil anything. But and also, technically, they've said that the last movie in this phase is not this. It's the Spider-Man movie that's coming out in like a month. I don't know what that means, but I don't know. What are you gonna give it? The bomb. Ah! <laughs> So there you go. I mean, it was worth the 11 years of wait of seeing this. And it was really, like I said, it, it's it's just sort of almost like a love letter to all the Marvel fans out there. What, what was that? What? What was that? I don't know. Anyway... So, uh, we gonna do this? We gonna do the review, or... Wait, what?